Coming up next on the Jeff Curley Show, you're going to meet the great Chad Hennings. He's had an amazing life from A-10 fighter pilot to winning three Super Bowl rings with the Dallas Cowboys in the 90s to now scoring touchdowns in real estate. His incredible story just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. So I got to Dallas in 1992, and I was spoiled. We started winning Super Bowls the moment I touched down. And uh, the man sitting next to me has a lot to do with that. He was part of those three Super Bowl winning teams of the 90s. Chad Hennings is in the studio. Thank you for honoring me with uh, with your presence. It's a yeah. pleasure to be here with Very you, sir. Cool. And you're truly one of the nicest guys I've ever met. He's he's in real estate now. We're going to learn more about that in a second. But I want to talk about your career because... Uh, you really have been so blessed, and I know you know that. I mean, if you if I had to draw up like a superhero, <laughs> it would be you. I mean, <laughs> Air Force fighter pilot, <laughs> Super Bowl winning, uh, you know, player, um, and now and just a strong Christian man, and and um, you lift people up with your speeches, you lift people up with your books. What's it like being Chad Hennings? Well, Jeff, first of all, thank you for having me on. Thank you for that introduction. I'll pay you your 20 bucks in there, sir. Appreciate that. Um, being Chad Hennings, you know, I was very fortunate to have grown up uh, in a farming family in the great state of Iowa. You know, a family farm that generationally has been in my family f since the 1850s. And I, I learned a lot about work ethic, like commitment, dedication. And truly, I, I never set off as a young man to, to be an All-American football player, to be a professional football player, to be a fighter pilot. I just wanted to be my best self that day, each and every day. And that's kind of my philosophy on, quote, unquote, of being what I call a force of character, someone who lives to be their best self every day. And they encourage others and they, the organizations that they're affiliated with, they encourage it to rise to a higher noble purpose or cause. But I went to... Uh, because of that mindset, I went to the Air Force Academy because uh, I wanted to challenge beyond um, the normal collegiate experience. And I wanted to play Division I college football, so that offered me the best of all worlds. I had success in the gridiron there. All-American, ended up winning the Outland Trophy. Um, was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys prior to um, graduating from the Air Force Academy, but I had a commitment of a minimum of five years, but I chose to up it to eight because I wanted to fly jets. Um, so technically playing for the Cowboys was never a gonna be an option for me. But I went through pilot training, um, end up flying 45 missions in Northern Iraq in support of Operation Provide Comfort, flying God's gift to closer support the mighty 810 Warthog. This one of the only jets that I could fit into. <laughs> I was going to say, they don't make those jets for like normal. Well, no, you know. and, it's, and it, the mission set was that it's, it's a great mission for a defensive lineman. You know, it's, it's a plane that flew low. It was kind of slower, but it, man, it packed a big punch. Um, after the first Gulf War, armed forces went through reduction in force. They ended up waiving uh, commitment time, pilot training commitment, and certainly even went through service academy commitment time across the board. So that allowed me to follow another dream was to go play for the Dallas Cowboys. And Jeff, you know, truly one of the things that I guess I'm most proud of for my life and my life experience was I flew my last mission in northern Iraq in 1992 and I played in the Super Bowl that same year. Wow. That's how fast life really changed for me. Yes. And that which I attribute back to my experience of growing up on the farm, just live in the moment, be your best sure. self today. You know, they ended up playing nine years with the Cowboys, won three Super Bowls. And as you know, from being in this area, once a Cowboy, always a Cowboy. Wanted to stay in and leverage that 
that experience into the next season of life, and that's professional, my professional career. What did I want to do when I grew up and I no longer wanted, or they needed to use my brain over my brawn, per se. And I got in, ended up getting into commercial real estate and found a great group of partners, and we have Rubicon representation today. Wow. Okay, we're going to talk more about that in a minute. He's so well-spoken. He's always invited on uh, national media. In fact, I found a great clip from CBN. Let's go ahead and roll that. Chad Hennings played nine seasons as a defensive lineman for the Dallas Cowboys. And before that, he attended the U.S. Air Force Academy and was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Chad believed his own work ethic was the reason for his success. But when his two-year-old son was suddenly fighting for his life, Chad could no longer rely on his own strength. Well, joining me right now is Chad Hennings. Chad, thank you so much for being here. Gosh, that's a, that's a firm handshake right there. Thank you. <laughs> well, take us back to 1988 when you were drafted into the NFL. What? Take us back to that moment. For me, it was a lot of uh, emotional turmoil. So I had made a commitment prior, uh, two years prior, when I was going into my junior year, that once you go into your junior year at a service academy, you owe a minimum of a five-year military commitment. I yep. wanted to fly jets, so my commitment was up to eight years, but I also wanted to play football in the NFL. Mm. So I had this, this conflict, but I made a commitment. I gave my word, so I knew that deep down I'd have to put football, any chance of playing football on the yep. back burner and fulfill my military commitment. So I yep. went on to become an A-10 fighter pilot. Wow, so you were a fighter pilot. So they had to wait for you a little bit, the Dallas Cowboys. They waited five years. Well, technically, I, I consider it a God thing. After the first Gulf War, which I flew 45 missions into Northern Iraq in support of Operation Provide Comfort, wow. our military went through a reduction in force, which they waived not only for me, but across the board individuals that wanted to separate from the military. Yeah. So I resigned my regular commission, took a reserve commission, and went on to play with the Dallas Cowboys. That's amazing. Well, what was that transition like coming from, you know, being a fighter pilot to being a NFL player for one of the greatest teams? One of the things, though, you know, I, I had learned that a lot of the similarities that helped me make me a success as a fighter pilot, you know, the, the preparation for a mission, the sense of teamwork, the flying with your wingman, how to think tactically, strategically, mm -hmm. those universal principles translated very well into going into the NFL. Although I was living in England, my last duty assignment was in England where the mean average summer temperature would be 78 degrees and when it would get above 90, people would you know, they die because no air conditioning. Yeah. But then going to play in an NFL training camp at Dallas or in, in Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. where it's 95, 98, 100 degrees. So it, physically, it was a challenge. Wow. Well, let's go back to the moment in your life where your two-year-old son was sick. What Talk about that. Well, what happened? It was just about six weeks after we had just won our third Super Bowl in four years. We beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in Super Bowl 30. Mm -hmm. um, my son chased for just totally out of the blue gets a fever, gets sick as, as young parents with our only child, take him to the pediatrician, but it beginning to progress where it became an autoimmune illness where we didn't know what was really wow. the matter with him. He'd yeah. strike high fevers, rash, um, swelling of joints uh, all over his body. Yeah. And it was a time for me where it was the first time in my life where I couldn't fix it mm. as a father, as a man. Yeah. And, and, and I struggled with that from a, both a, a faith standpoint, who is God, and, you know, as just as a husband and as a father. Yeah. So how did that affect you? I mean, what did you learn from that experience? Well, I learned who God was. Mm. And I learned that, that it's the aspect of my identity is not what I did. You know, a lot of times I would put my identity that, hey, I'm a fighter pilot mm -hmm. or I'm a professional athlete. Yeah. But what you do does not define who you are. And I learned that the character and nature of God, that no matter what we go through in life, that God still loves us, that he loved us enough to send his son, Jesus Christ, to come into this world to die on the cross for us. Mm and that I can't earn his love through my works, my you know, commitment, um, that Jesus did everything on the cross for me. Yeah. All right, I just thought of another career, preacher. Man, you, <laughs> you do have the heart of a preacher. Uh, let's get an update on your son. How, how old is Chase he? Chase is 31. He's awesome. He bought his first home a couple years ago. He got in when interest rates were, were low, so sure. he locked that in. Great move financially for him. He's got a great job, and he's thriving. I couldn't be more proud of my son. He's had to overcome many obstacles in his life. And um, he has taught me so much about grit, determination, and um, what it means to really live to be your best self each and every day. Wow. Um, 
Chad is such an inspiring speaker. We had a chance to work together a dozen years ago with, uh, you gave some speeches to the Rotary and you signed a bunch of books and I had the privilege of working with Chad on that project. Uh, let's go ahead and roll his speaker reel. I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. <laughs> That reporter began to write the headline, Redneck Moron Kills Family Pet. He is such an accomplished man, and he embodies the spirit of service and excellence that we all strive for. I think this was absolutely huge. Define what is right, what is wrong. Everyone in this audience I was watching they were captivated. My first four years in the NFL, I had three Super Bowl rings. With that rapid rise to success, it paid a price. Inspirational, definitely. I thought he did an excellent job. Those people that had a purpose or a meaning to live for, many times they lived while others that lived in healthier conditions died. Very inspiring and motivational. He brought up a lot of good points and he followed them up with really good concrete life examples. He's very funny. I accumulated a fortune of $1.37. Then my wife's father died and left me $2 million. <laughs> I thought he was a great speaker. Well, he's a fantastic uh, speaker. The priorities that I started my adult life pursuing, the things that I thought were important for my wife, for my kids, for my career, they were temporal. They weren't lasting. If you want an inspiring speaker that speaks to the heart, speaks to the, the spirit of each person, bring Chad Hennings in. He's an incredible speaker that captivates the audience, holds their attention, and they will leave going home on a better level. Wow, that was a dozen years ago, and you have not changed. So I, I, I named you I, like the name, of your, <laughs> the name of your dermatologist. So uh, you've written three books. The most recent uh -huh. book, we're going to put the cover up, is Forces of Character. So tell us about this book. This book I wrote because I wanted to achieve and show that, that, that character is ubiquitous, that character is a choice. The choices that we make day to day matter. And I sat down with 10 people that had an impact on my life, and I had conversations with them. Some names, you know, Jeff, you most certainly recognize Roger Staubach, Troy Aikman, Jason Garrett, wow. Greg Popovich, coach for the Spurs, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Had conversations with a survivor of Auschwitz, a human rights attorney from former communist Romania, an astronaut, the CEO for National Center on Fathering, and a, and a homelessness expert from the local area. I just wanted to show, you know, whether you're male, female, you know, doesn't matter what your race, black, white, your your economic scale of where you fall into that, that, that character's a choice. And it's been a very impactful, you know, journey. And the book has had the impact that I had hoped it would have because it caused a conversation of people to ask themselves that question, why? Why do I do what I do? And and my actions, you know, they matter. They matter, you know, the impact that I have in my family as well as my business and to impact the relationships that, that I'm affiliated with. Wow. I want to talk about real estate. So, um, you know, you talk about character, you talk about your faith. How does all of that play a role with uh, Rubicon representation? You know, the lesson that I learned a long time ago is what you do does not define who you are. First and foremost, for me as an individual, I've been able, as we've talked about in this interview, to do and accomplish a lot of different things in life from student athlete, fighter pilot, professional athlete, uh, public speaker, and now commercial real estate. And for me, it's, it's all about that aspect of identity and core values. That's the foundation to everything that we do. And, and that's what, you know, we helped build within Rubicon representation. I have great partners and a great team. And around that, what we do is tenant representation. We do development, we build buildings, and we also are in the capital markets. And we concentrate predominantly in three areas, the office market, the industrial market, and the, the medical office. Field. So we build medical office buildings. We wow. do, you know, ASC surgical centers. We build an industrial product, and 
you know, in today's economy, that's what I learned a long time ago flying jets, that the flexibility is the key to air power. And no matter what the economy is, is your business built to be resilient, to withstand whatever the economy, whatever the local bureaucracy throws at you, you have to have that flexibility. Absolutely. We're going to pull up the website. And as we scroll down the website, uh, you mentioned uh, some projects that interest you guys right now, like medical. Medical is not going anywhere. It's, it's recession proof. Talk about, you know, making wise investments with, um, with your money. You know, it's... The bottom line is, I think that people have to realize that the time of cheap money, of death, you know, the, the quantitative easing that we've had, you know, is gone. No matter if you invest in real estate, it has to make sense from an economic standpoint. You know, if you're if you're going to be a landlord, you know, are the quality of your tenants, are they able to pay or, you know, is their business, you know, recession proof? And that's where who knew that COVID was going to hit and have the impact that it did on the office market and the office, you know, it's going to still working through a lot of those issues. Sure. Do people come into the office? You know, what is their, uh, your footprint in your office space look like? Um, Absolutely. There's a lot of questions that still need to be answered and, and, and we'll get through it. There's always going to be that office component, but what it looks, what it had looked like four years ago, is not what it's going to look like four years from now. Yeah. Well, you know something about winning teams. Uh, let's talk about your team at Rubicon, and we're going to pull up the website so you can brag about some of your, your colleagues. You bet. Uh, Kyle and, and Daniel both, and another partner that we have, uh, Cameron Rogers, we're both all former collegiate football players. No kidding. And we specifically, I learned something from watching Roger Staubach and Ross Perot as they built mm -hmm. their businesses. They intentionally recruited prior athletes and former military individuals because they had that sense of culture that competitiveness but work well with each other as a team yes. and as i alluded to in my earlier remarks that there's some universal principles that you know i've garnered in life that translate to no matter what you do in life sure. and against those foundational principles of identity and core values and if you do the x's and o's correctly you know the, the business the economics of that business will follow just like how you built you Thank know you. your business Thank it's you. the little things yes attention to the detail and the little things translate to the big things like I can honestly tell you that I never set out to be you know that all-american football player or that Outland trophy winner I wanted to be the best defensive lineman that I could be for my teammates and be the best teammate all the other accolades you know that stuff takes care of itself do what you have within your purview and your control and the rest of the stuff works out we got about two minutes left so I want you to leave them with a final thought about winning and winning with character because you know some people win but they're just you know they're they're compromising parts of themselves to win you know one quote that i can draw from is it's the aspect of where it goes watch your thoughts to become your words watch your words to become your actions watch your actions becomes your behavior watch your behavior becomes your character and watch your character becomes your legacy when people think about legacy a lot of times you know I look back on my experiences. I've been able to accomplish and achieve a lot of different things in my life, but ultimately, Jeff, so what? For me, a person's legacy is not derived by material possessions you've been able to accumulate, nor is it derived by all the accolades, your achievements. You know, to me, a person's true legacy is defined by relationships, those people whose lives you've been able to impact and hopefully for the good. And for me, that's, that's the X's and O's. That's, where I get down into the weeds, I take care of those. I take care of those people that my teammates, my partners, lift them up. And I lift up those individuals that work for us as a member of our team. When you do that, then good things seem to happen. Wow. You're one of my favorite interviews ever. <laughs> so, thank you for, uh, for coming and sharing your heart and your wisdom and your faith with us. We're going to end with his website, which is uh, rubiconrep.com. The great Chad Hennings. Thanks for coming on the show. Jeff, thank you. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.